come again for the calls. November 4, Echo India, Kilo, Lloyd and Madison. Hi and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So in this video, I want to show you this. This is the Shari Pi Hat U, which essentially is an extremely compact analog radio node for connecting into the all-star internet VoIP network. Now it sounds quite complicated, but no, it's actually quite easy to use. So back in June 2019, I released a video titled What is an All-Star Node? And I covered how I built my own All-Star Node using a Raspberry Pi, handheld radio, and various other parts. Now with the Shari Pi solution, it's even easier to get onto the All-Star network and start chatting to people from around the world. Now over on their website, hamprojects.info, you'll find various models for sale. The product which I purchased was the Shari Pi Hat U, which is the UHF 70 centimeter version. They do also sell a two meter version, which is called Shari Pi Hat V. Now, as well as selling kits, they also sell fully built nodes, which just need configuring when you receive them. However, I wanted to purchase just the Pi Hat and build it myself, as I already had a spare Raspberry Pi 4 and wanted to put it to good use. Now the cost of the Shari Pi Hat U at the time of creating this video was just $80, so a pretty fair price. So in the kit, we received the Pi Hat board, the SA818 radio module, a 3D printed hole template, a sticker, a 3D printed USB block, a short UHF antenna with SMA board socket, a short length of wire with a Molex style connector, a 40 pin header, an RF choke, and an Argon Neo Raspberry Pi 4 case made of aluminium. As you can tell from the kit list, there will be some building work needed before we can put it all together. Now luckily, the construction details for the Shari Pi Hat, which can be found on the Ham Projects website, is written really, really well. Every step is carefully explained and easy to follow. It's also downloadable as a PDF for offline viewing, or if maybe you want to print it out. So the first step for me was to drill the required holes into the case. The first hole was in the middle part of the case. This small round hole allows two wires to go between the Shari Pi hat and the USB port on the Raspberry Pi. I'll talk more about that a bit later. Now four more holes are then required on the top magnetic case cover. The three on the left are for allowing the status LEDs to be seen. And the larger hole on the right is where the SMA socket comes from the Pi hat for the antenna. Now the next step was to temporarily mount the Pi 4 into the case. Push on the 40 pin header onto the Pi header and then mount the Pi hat onto the top of the Pi. I then soldered all of the 40 header pins and placed the SA818 radio module into place. Now this also had to be soldered on all of the available pins as shown here. Now once removed, you can then solder the two pin plastic Molex connector to the Pi hat. Now it's time to remove the Pi hat and Pi from the case and prepare for final assembly. Using the supplied thermal transfer pad, I peeled off one side to expose the sticky side and then placed it on the Pi like this. I then mounted the Pi 4 into the case. Now there are certain pressure points within this case that uses the actual case to dissipate heat from the process of the Pi 4. And with the Shari Pi hat installed, we can then take the black and red cable plug one end into the white Molex connector on the Shari Pi hat, and then the other side, we solder onto two specific connections of one of the Pi 4's USB ports, as shown here. Now, if you're wondering why you need the black and red cables between the Pi hat and the Pi USB port, this is so that the sound card chip on the Pi hat can be seen by the Pi. Unfortunately, it's not possible to get this connection through the Pi's GPIO pins, but as you can see there, it's fairly easy to get this connection going. Lastly, we attach the base of the Neo Pi case and then place the top cover into place. After attaching the antenna, we have a finished Shari Pi Hat U ready to go. Well, almost. So the next step or last step to get this working will be to image the SD card with the all-star image and then configure it. You will, however, have to provide your own SD card. I'd recommend something around an eight gig, which should be fine. Now I'm not going to go through the whole configuration in this video, mainly because there's quite a lot of steps and it will take quite some time to go through each of them. 
However, the setup procedure document that is available on the HAM project's website is just fantastic. It literally covers every single step from imaging the SD card, obtaining a node number and password from the All-Star Link website, through to configuring your node and how you want it to work. Now, once you have the node configured, you're probably wondering how you control it. Now, as the node is connected to your local Wi-Fi or LAN, then you can access the AllMon2 control panel by typing the node's IP address into a web browser on your local network. You can use AllMon2 to change the node you're connected to and even see a bubble map of all the other nodes that are connected to the node that you're connected to. A while ago now, I wrote a mobile application called Node Remote, which is available on Android and iOS. Now, the application was originally designed to allow you to control your all-star node without needing a computer. The app works by logging into your node and then using quick link buttons to change which node your node is connected to. Now, other information is also shown on the display of the app and each of the quick link buttons are editable so you can create your own favorite links. As mentioned before, it's available on the Google Play Store or the iOS App Store. Now, one thing I didn't mention previously about the Shari Pi Hat, and that was how you program the SA818 radio module to the frequency of your choice. Well, included in the software instructions is a link to a Python script, which will be used to program the radio module's frequency and, if required, the CTC access tones. Don't worry, it's all covered in the software installation manual. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you haven't heard of All Star Network before, then I hope you've learned something new about one way in which you can access it. I guess it's similar to Echo Link, but in my opinion, it has a much higher audio quality, and it also has some great functionality. If you use one of these, or you access All Star in a different way, leave a comment down below. I'll be interested to know your experiences. Until the next video, take care, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next one.